Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Well, I've always enjoyed a good parade. How about you? On a local level, parades like Gemutlichite Days or the Fort Holiday Parade or in Whitewater, the Fourth of July Parade are always fun to go to. Growing up in Minnesota, I loved to go to the Minneapolis Torchlight Parade or the Holly Dazzle Parade. In high school, I was in marching band and had the honor of marching in Washington, D.C. for the Apple Blossom Festival Parade. And then the highlight of my high school marching was marching in the Orange Bowl Parade in Miami, Florida. But I think of all of those parades, my favorite was the year that we journeyed into Milwaukee for the Great Circus Parade when they hauled all of the antique circus wagons on the train from Baraboo to Milwaukee and had that wonderful parade. Seeing all of those incredible, beautiful old circus wagons, all of the costume performers, and of course all of the circus animals was quite a treat. And who knows if that parade will ever be held again. We found a great spot to watch the parade on a curb among a gathering crowd. And then before the parade began, some people started doing the strangest thing I've ever seen as a pre-parade ritual. They'd run out into the middle of the street with a piece of sidewalk chalk in their hand and they'd draw great big circles and other shapes and they'd write their name in the space. I wondered what they were doing. And then, some of you perhaps have seen this happen, and maybe you've heard me share this before, but I was a little slow on the uptake. I, I kept looking at that, and the parade had started, and it made no sense to me, until I heard a great big roar and cheer from a group to the left of me, and I looked over just in time to see the tail of a great big Persian horse lifted up and dropping road apples into one of the spaces. And I heard the man scream out at the top of his voice, you guys owe me a beer. And I thought, who but cheeseheads would come up with a drinking game in a parade? You should have heard the roar when the elephants came by. <laughs> Apparently, the bigger the deposit, the bigger the return on one's investment. At the very end of the parade came the cleanup crew, a group of people all dressed as clowns rolling big barrels with supersized pooper scoopers. What a mess they had to clean up. Well, Today's parade of Jesus riding into Jerusalem palls in comparison. Although there may have been a bit of a mess left over from some palm branches, a few stray articles of clothing, and a few road apples from the animal, it was nothing compared to that Circus Day parade. But with that said, the parade of Jesus was far more important and far more impressive in many ways. It is the day, after all, that we celebrate as Palm Sunday. And I want you to understand why it's such an important event for us as Christians. We need to see it, first of all, in light of two separate Old Testament scripture passages, and then thirdly, we need to see it in the light of the political climate of Jesus' day. So first, the scripture. The first scripture in the Old Testament that we have to have in mind when we talk about Palm Sunday is Psalm 118. It is a psalm of praise and thanksgiving. It is also known as a processional psalm. It's the psalm or the song that was sung as a king would come home from victory in a battle and was approaching the temple in Jerusalem where the king would worship and give God glory for the victory. In the midst of that psalm, if you read it, you'll see that the people begin to sing Hosanna. 
And as I mentioned in the children's sermon, Hosanna means save us. So they're singing this song saying save us, which is directed at both the king as their leader and then at the power of God that was shown forth in the victory. In the midst of singing, they also are waving palm branches. That ties into the Old Testament and Hebraic understanding that these palm branches are a nationalistic symbol. They are proof of God being there. The palm branches are almost like waving a flag, might be at a parade. It's a statement of God's victory and power for the Hebrew people. So, in addition to that scripture is another one. It's from the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, beginning at the ninth verse. In that, it talks about this king and this procession that's going up to the temple. What's interesting is that that king rides on the foal of a donkey, a baby. Rather than riding in on a great big war horse, rather than riding in waving a sword and wearing armor, the king comes back riding a little animal that you'd never take into battle. Rather than a fist raised in victory, this is a symbol of humility. And in fact, in that passage in Zechariah, it talks about that this will be a victory of peace for all people. So, this is not in any way caissons of tanks and rockets and goose-stepping troops. This is not a show of military might. This is a show of power through weakness. This is a show of authority through humility. This is very different than how the world would view a victory party. And so we have the scripture from Psalm 118 and Zechariah 9, and all of that is brought to focus in the political time of Jesus, where the people were expecting and wanting a Messiah, a big military king, someone who'd come in on the war horse and would kick the Roman rule out. Jesus comes in as the humble, victorious king, announcing a different kind of reign, a different kind of rule, a new way of being. This isn't lost on the people as they pick up the palm branches and they shout hosannas. All of that focuses on what Palm Sunday is all about for us. You see, God has been watching us. God has been observing our parade, if you will. God has been witnessing our journey through life. And God has seen us making a mess of things, of leaving the parade route strewn with waste. We are the ones who've circled things and put our name on things that do not belong to us. God sees that. We are the ones who have soiled ourselves and soiled others. We at times get dumped upon, but we do plenty of dumping upon others. God looked down and he said, what a mess. It is into this mess that we cry out, Hosanna, save us, Lord. So God looked down and said, what can I do about this? What can I do about this mess? I guess I'll just have to go down there and clean it up myself. So this is the story. The story of the passion. The story of salvation. This is God's plan for us as we journey through Holy Week and as we journey through life. God comes, the Word made flesh, the humble King who cleanses us in a very unexpected way. He will die the death of a criminal on the cross, but it is there that God will turn death to life. 
where God will take on sin and evil and defeat them. You know, you and I are actually the ones who God has drawn a circle around. On us, God has written God's own name. We have been given the sign of the cross on our foreheads in baptism. And we are reminded that no matter what gets dumped on us by ourselves or by others, that he is the one who will wash us in the waters of baptism again and again and again. He comes to cleanse us as we eat his body and blood, this given for you. He comes to wash us and cleanse us. He's the one who wheels in the big barrel and scoops up all the waste of this life. And I wanted to remind you that as Christians, we actually look forward to the day when he comes again. We don't fear it. We want him to come because one day he will come again and he will say enough is enough. No more mess. No more sin. No more hatred. No more abuse. Enough is enough. One day he will come and complete his reign as the victorious and humble Messiah King. On purpose, I chose an Advent hymn for today, a hymn that talks about hosannas and about arrival of the King, because we look forward to the day when the parade route will be made clean and the pathway to heaven will be made open to all. So let's sing our hosannas on our journey of life, and let's look forward to the day when all of us will march to heaven together. In the name of Christ, amen. Let's sing together hymn number 264.